So I'm gonna be showing you guys some backup utilities for Linux. So let's get started. Now backups are super important, especially if you're the type of person to format your computer a lot, like this workbench that I use every day. So I'm gonna be showing you a couple of utilities that I've used in the past and I currently use right now. So the first one we have is Pika. This is the current backup utility that I currently use versus the other ones that I'm gonna be showing you, but they're all pretty much kind of the same. So first we have Pika and to set up a backup, it's super easy. You just have to hit set up backup, set up a repository. Now you can use remote location like SSH or if you have a NAS or a location on the disk if you have two hard drives or something like that. In my case, a USB hard drive that I have plugged in. So this has half a terabyte and it's a USB hard drive. So I'm gonna click on this and we're gonna name the backup repository whatever name you want. So in my case, since this computer is called Workbench, I'm gonna be naming this backup Workbench Don hit continue and it's your choice if you want to encrypt the data or unencrypt it now i'm just going to leave it unencrypted so i can show you how the folder structure looks like now here we go we have everything all set up and if that's it you are ready to back up the main folder that it has backup is your home directory now if you have other directories other than the home directory that you want to back up you might want to add it over here but in my case everything that i do is usually in the home directory but there are a lot of things that i want to exclude so what i could do is actually click in the plus button and make sure that I don't want to include the trash, flat pack, or virtual machines I have in case. Those are the stuff I really don't need. I am actually going to exclude another folder. And in my case, I don't see it here, but it's my wine folder. So anything that I have installed for wine, I don't want that copied over as well. So I'm going to do that. You see, there's a new director here. These are not being uh, carried over. And if I want to add more, I could do, I want to exclude folder. Another folder is dot local that's up to you like you don't have to exclude these folders i just don't want to make my backup that large so i can show you guys what i'm talking about so i'm going to add another folder called actually no i'll leave that dot config i was thinking but now once everything is all set i could just hit backup now and it'll start backing up all the folders and you'll see a percentage over here now archives this is what you would use to read your backups but it'll show up in a little bit once it starts backing up now schedule is another thing where you could actually schedule backups like weekly, daily, monthly, whatever you want. Now I'm going to abort this backup because I don't want to transfer all the files over to uh, SSD. So you can just stop it over there. Now going back into schedule, I could hit schedule for backups. I could set it for daily. I could set it for whatever day I want or whatever time I want. So if I want it weekly, monthly, hourly, preferred time and how many backups I want to delete because it gets larger as you go. So if you want to do this, regular cleanup archives, keep many, keep some, custom, you could do keep some details, whatever days you want that you don't want to keep. It's all up to you what you want to do over here. I'm just going to disable this for now. Disable scheduling. Now in archives, if I want to check the files that I want, I'm going to go over to my folders. And here we have my USB hard drive. It's called backup workbench. And you can see I can't read the files itself. It does have a readme does have data, I have zero, and that's it. These are all the files that are backed up. Like you can't really do anything with this, but you would have to actually go into the Pika and go into here and actually go into browse save files. And this will actually open a file and mount the backup. And you could see that this is what's been backed up. This is what's been mounted. And if you want to restore your files, what you need to do is just literally take this and you could copy this and paste it over whatever you have. So if I have documents over here and I would do copy and then go back to my home and then paste this one folder here, overwrite that. Now I don't have anything in documents, so it's not gonna say anything except for Blackmagic Design, but that's how you would actually um, restore your files using Pika. So Pika is more simplified version of something called Vorta. And Vorta is the original utility that I used to use that uses the same technology in the back end, which is Borg, to compress everything and back up everything. So we're gonna take a look at that. So here's Vorta and it's for Borg and it's the same backup style. So if you're gonna do something, it's actually gonna create the same folder structure. Uh, let me show you an example. Here I'm gonna add a new repository like we did before. So new repository, you could use remote or you could um, do local, whatever you want. So I'm gonna do local. And in my case, remote, uh, removable media. And I'm gonna create a new folder called backup. Something different from workbench backup. Hit okay. It's gonna name the repository backup and I don't want to enter a paraphrase. And I am also gonna disable the encryption on the next page, you see that? 
and then I'm gonna hit add. So I'm gonna create this new repository. Now in sources, this is where you would add your file. So in my case, it's gonna be home slash Don. And you can exclude items also. You have presets also like uh, Chromium, this, that, and the other stuff. Uh, I don't see recycling bin here. Uh, maybe it's not here anymore, but uh, you could add custom stuff over here like slash uh, home slash Don slash wine. So this is not as pretty as Pika. That's why I like using Pika now because it's just a little bit more user friendly. But in our case, it does work and it will do the same thing. You have schedule backups, you have your archives back in here and then repository. And if I hit backup, start backup, I'm not gonna let the whole thing go, but you can see it's actually gonna create a folder in our backup. And it's gonna look similar to what we had from our Pika. It's gonna have data, it's gonna have zero. We're not gonna be able to see the data in here unless we pull open from the archives, but you get the idea. This and Pika, Vorta and Pika are similar in the back end, which is using Borg but the front end is completely different. Uh, I enjoy using Pika a lot more than I did Vorta, even though I feel that Vorta is faster and more powerful in what selection you can use. I just feel that Pika is enough for me. I'm gonna cancel this out because I'm not gonna let this whole thing back up, but you get the idea. Same thing, you go into archives, you could actually pull up the backups just like you did with Pika. Now, here's another utility that I've just recently started playing around with, um, which is called K up or K backup. And since I use KDE a lot, I decided to try this, but this is more of a glorified copy and paste than it is really a backup utility in my case, I feel. So in, if I want to back up something like my documents, downloads, games, music, pictures, I would have to check off the box. So I, would, I could check off the entire thing like this, but in my case, I'm just gonna check off a couple of boxes, right? I would choose the target and in my case, I would choose the removable media, create a new folder. I'll just call this K up and OK. And it's going to have that file. And all I have to do is just hit start backup and I'll transfer all the files from this location, which is games, downloads, documents and stuff like that right over to that area. But in this case, it just creates a big zip file. Once everything is done, you're just going to have a backup of the file. So a K backup, if it's something you don't want to use um, Pika for or have a utility to actually pull the archive, you can actually just use uh, K backup and then extract the archive and have your backups restored that way. This is similar to what I used to use and actually I still use on Windows, which is free file sync. Now, if you never heard of this utility, this is really good. Actually, free file sync is probably still one of my top backup utilities because it actually has built in rsync. So it allows me to SSH over everything and synchronize everything I need. Again, this is very easy to use. All I have to do is just browse the location I want. And then the remote lo location, I just browse this and then say like, if I want to put it into here, create a new folder, I'll call it free. I can set up filters if I want to, if I want to copy everything, if I don't want to copy trash or recycle, which I don't. And if I don't want wine, I would do star slash dot wine and that will add that directory to not uh, include that as well. And here I could actually synchronize two ways and it's gonna copy everything over and it's gonna tell me what it's gonna copy over and this is how free file sync works. I really do like this utility. I use it in Windows all the time and I've used to use this in Linux earlier, way earlier in the days, but I switched over to Vorta and then now I just recently switched over to Pika. And I've been, again, playing around with K backup, but it's not something I would probably keep as far as my backup utility goes, but if I did need something to be zipped right away and tossed over to a USB, I do use K backup. Anyway, that is it with the backup utilities. If you guys use other backup utilities other than uh, the ones I mentioned, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.